The company filed for incorporation in 1998, marking the first step in transforming a Stanford dorm room experiment into Alphabet, one of the most valuable companies in the world. Larry Page and Sergey Brin, the co-founders of Google, were two of the richest men in the world thanks to their groundbreaking search engine. But they never imagined it would grow into a multi-billion dollar business, or the most effective search engine in the world. Good Lux is a channel dedicated to inspiring you to extend your perspective, achieve general life breakthroughs, and discover what personal achievements may bring us. This video seeks to explain the scope of Google's strength and how it began in a garage, where it had humble beginnings. Let's look at the history of Google as a firm and a search engine, as well as how potent it is today. Let's get started. How modest was Google's beginnings? Google began as a PhD undertaking. Despite its current astronomical success, Google wasn't always a search engine. Page began gathering web links in late 1995, after deciding with his advisor that it would be a good idea to do so. Although they were unsure of his exact plans, it appeared that nobody was paying much attention to the links on the internet, which shows which pages link to one another. Links that led back to internet pages were of particular importance to Page. Being the son of a computer science professor, Page was unaware that links on the internet may serve as proof of competence and significance, much like citations do in the academic world. Brin and Page combined their expertise in mathematics and computer science to to create an algorithm that took both the quantity and significance of links into account. Page rank, the resulting algorithm named after him, would be more effective than the current search engines like AltaVista and Excite. Page was keen that his doctoral thesis focus on the web and Brin became interested in his work as a result of Page's research. In August 1996, they posted the initial iteration of Google on Stanford's website. A garage served as the first Google headquarters. Like Apple and Amazon, Page and Brin opened Google's first headquarters in a garage turned office building in Menlo Park, California. With part of the funds provided by their investors, the area was a portion of a home owned by Susan Wachiki, who eventually rose to the position of senior vice president at Google and is currently the CEO of YouTube. Later, Wachiki's sister Anne, who founded 23andMe, will get married to Brin. The business recalls that the previous offices dated desktop PCs, ping pong table, and vivid blue carpet helped create the atmosphere for those early mornings and late evenings. The initial Google server was housed in Legos. How much has Google gained in power? Google is so strong that it equalizes the planet. Google gives the term globalization a new meaning. Developing nations like India, among many others, have free access to information that much of the rest of the world already has because of the company's innovations over the past 10 years and low-cost mobile broadband. With Google Translate and Google Search available in 108 and over 135 languages, respectively, it is possible for anyone in the world to accurately translate any web page because of the company's ability to serve so many worldwide users. Additionally, because the corporation is privately held, it may have an impact on poor countries far more quickly than governments do because they have more complex interests to safeguard. Additionally, Google's yearly economic impact report claims that in 2019, $308 billion in US economic activity was fueled by the company's search and advertising capabilities. For 16 million American firms alone, its advertisements and searches directly resulted in clicks in that same year. Google is incredibly transformative and free. In addition to its search engine, the company's other platforms have favorably changed how we operate. Without charging a fee, the music, television, and advertising industries have been altered by YouTube, which has given the concept of celebrity a fresh, democratic spin. It just unveiled a cloud gaming platform devoid of consoles. People can now create their apps and use them to increase their earnings thanks to Google's Android APIs. Together, Google Mail, Chrome, Maps, and Photos have well over 2 billion users, and Google Drive is rapidly approaching that mark. Even though it would cost more than $10 billion to develop and operate the data centers needed to support such platforms, the corporation makes all of its products available for free. 
numerous free beneficial tools that it has developed have changed the way people live their daily lives. Not only is Google strong, but it also has enormous scope. Google can develop science in a way that no other corporation can because of its extensive access to research on every topic in every sector. The business purchased, on average, more than one firm each week in 2010 to 2011. Its sheer size and computing capability can be used to investigate topics like machine learning and how humans and computers interact, which is how self-driving cars are being developed. The parent firm of Google, Alphabet Inc., is working on everything from drone deliveries to home automation. The business also uses its wealth of data for humanitarian endeavors such as preventing child exploitation and monitoring influenza trends across populations. Most recently, it assisted in contract tracing efforts to stop the spread of the coronavirus and gave $6.5 million in funding to nonprofits and fact checkers battling the spread of false information. There is no denying that the company's influence and reputation have had a positive impact on humankind's future. Google has complete and immersive control. Google and Facebook jointly own close to 70% of the market for digital advertising, and the business also dominates the platform on which most advertisements are managed via its DFP, Double Click for Publishers service. More than 2.9 million businesses utilize Google's marketing services in some capacity. YouTube, which is owned by Google, is the second largest search engine after Google Search. As a result, it's always the business's way or the highway. This is why the US is suing the tech behemoth for antitrust violations. A critic who had openly backed the European Commission's decision to punish Google for abusing its market power was also sacked from a think organization supported by Google. Aside from this case, the business was the subject of another antitrust investigation originating from different nations due to its status as a monopoly. They also came under fire from Congress in 2018 for creating what was thought to be a filtered search engine for the Chinese market. Although there are other search engines, such as DuckDuckGo or Yahoo, none come close to Google in terms of reach or overall offers. Is Google a powerhouse now? The solution is apparent. Google is all-knowing and all-seeing. Sayonara privacy. Although using Google services is a choice, it is necessary to function in the social and professional realms and is impossible to go without. Google Hangouts and Google Calendar are two tools that businesses use to connect and share staff schedules. Given that Gmail has 1.5 billion users, the business has access to that many emails. Any Android phone automatically has Google Apps, which provide Google with real-time access to your precise location. All of this ignores the company's access to your search history, which they use to build a profile of you and serve you appropriate adverts. Is Google an unwieldy force? Think about this, its market share for search engines is 90%. The US government is suing Google to break up the internet behemoth and stop suspected antitrust violations because it appears to believe that Google is an unlicensed monopoly. Google, on the other hand, is the entire web with little competition, so nowhere is safe. Not even your health information. Facebook receives a lot of criticism for data manipulation, but you have to choose to be on one of its three platforms to have your data compromised. A 2019 hospital data sharing agreement brings this privacy concern to light. Google has excessive sway in politics and academia. Google has been charged with influencing decision makers at all levels of government. With its money, the corporation has supported 330 papers on public policy alone since 2005. Thus, this claim appears to have some merit. Additionally, the business acknowledged in 2015 having political clout in Washington to refute allegations that it intervened in an FTC probe in 2012. Google's influence doesn't just affect the government, university research teams are also sometimes unaware of the donors who fund their grants. According to a 2017 research, Google financed studies suddenly spiked when authorities put the company's business model into jeopardy. This is proof of Google's academic clout and influence. 
Along with other beneficial scientific and medical discoveries, Google is constantly providing the world with tools that anyone can use to succeed, particularly in the fight against coronavirus. However, the degree of control the firm has over numerous areas and industries raises concerns and may amount to a violation of both personal privacy and authority. Is Google a powerhouse now? Do you believe it has the good of the world in mind? Do you dispute this assertion? Have you got any additional recommendations? Although the responses are undoubtedly arbitrary, we are curious. Post any more questions or suggestions in our comments area. Click the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed the video so that others may view it and be inspired. To ensure that you don't miss any new videos about personal development, enable the notification bell as well. See you next time.